The slightest trace of a peanut can be lethal, but your smartphone could save you. What happens when you are allergic? This is the University of the Netherlands. Are you allergic to a certain food? Many people worldwide have allergies, and sometimes these allergies can be life-threatening. This means that allergic consumers are forced to restrict their diets to prevent contact with allergens. And to be certain a food is truly allergen-free, consumers need to send their food samples to the lab for analysis. So how cool would it be if consumers could quickly and easily test food themselves. Before we get into food analysis, let's first make clear the distinction between allergies and allergens. An allergy is what happens when someone is sensitive towards a particular substance or food. And people can be allergic to many things, dust, pollen, animal dander, insect bites, but sometimes the most severe reactions are those towards foods. And the substance that someone can be allergic to is called the allergen. Now, allergens are capable of causing what we call an abnormal immune response in the body of someone who is sensitized. And this sensitivity is the allergy. Our immune system is what protects us from the presence of foreign objects in the blood. It produces antibodies, Y-shaped proteins, that can detect and counteract these harmful substances. Your immune system can then remember these substances so that it can respond to it more rapidly in the future. But in allergic individuals, the immune system sees the allergen as a threat and fights it. Now, there are many contributing factors to why people might develop an allergy. But currently, there are no cures for food allergies, meaning allergic individuals need to stick to strict avoidance diets to prevent contact with them. Now, over 250 million people have allergies, with 17 million in Europe alone. But today, I want to talk to you specifically about food allergens. A food allergen is a protein that can be present in a food, and this is what people can be allergic to. And foods can contain several allergenic proteins. For example, peanut has 12 allergenic proteins. And what's more, these can be structurally similar to other non-related allergenic proteins, such as those present in hazelnuts. And what this means is it can lead to cross-reactivity. And this is where people can be allergic to multiple foods. And these responses can range from mild all the way through to potentially life-threatening. You can develop a tingling sensation in the mouth, a rash, or become nauseous. But the most severe reactions are those called anaphylaxis. And this is when your body goes into shock, your blood pressure drops rapidly, and breathing becomes difficult. Peanuts are one of the food allergens most notoriously associated with anaphylaxis. Moreover, these reactions can occur almost immediately after someone eats a food. And as I mentioned, there are no cures for allergies. So allergic individuals need to stick to these strict avoidance diets to prevent contact with them. And this can be challenging because people can be allergic to just about any food, although 90% of the world's food allergies are caused by the 14 allergens on the screen now. As I mentioned, people can be allergic to multiple food allergens. One common co-allergy is between peanuts and tree nuts, such as hazelnut. Despite peanuts and hazelnuts being completely different allergens, their protein structures are similar enough that some people can be allergic to both. And this can be quite dangerous. Now, there are regulations and legislation in place to control for the presence of these allergens. In the EU, we have a zero-tolerance approach. And that means that any foods that contain allergens must explicitly state so on the packaging or menu. But even still, unintended allergens do find their way into our food chain. And it's these undeclared allergens that pose the biggest risk for the consumer. Such allergens can enter our food through cross-contact, where allergen-free and allergen-containing foods are produced 
or prepared on the same site or kitchen as allergen-containing foods. Such minor amounts of allergens from cross-contact can also lead to allergic reactions. And that means it would be really helpful if we could provide consumers with an easy to use, affordable and reliable way to screen for allergens themselves. Let's start in the lab and see how we can make an allergen test into something people can use at home. I use antibodies to detect allergens. Remember, antibodies are proteins produced by our immune system to counteract the presence of foreign objects in the blood. My test uses antibodies that have been selected for being highly specific towards peanut or hazelnut proteins. Now, the core test I use is a lateral flow immunoassay. You may recognize this as a pregnancy test or as a COVID self-test. These tests typically have two lines. The top line is the control line. This is a line of antibodies that can bind to any antibody, and it should always be present when you run a test as an indication that the test is working correctly. The other line is the test line. This is a line of antibodies specific towards our target antigen, in this case, hazelnut or peanut allergen. When there's an allergen present in our food, it binds with the specific antibody at the test line. Then, a secondary antibody, this one labelled with a black carbon nanoparticle, binds on top of this, sandwiching the allergen between the two antibodies and generating a black signal. As more allergen is captured, in turn, more carbon nanoparticle labelled antibodies can bind. And this results in an increase in test line signal intensity with increase in allergen concentration. So the test can be used to tell us not only if an allergen is present, but also to indicate just how much allergen is present. Lateral flow immunoassays typically have two lines, but there can be more. I have a test line for peanut, but I also have an additional test line for hazelnut. Remember the common co-allergy between these two? Now, maybe you were wondering, pregnancy tests and COVID tests work with liquid samples, but how can we test a solid food especially without any sophisticated lab equipment. Well, let's see how this works. We have our cookie containing possibly a lethal allergen. We break off a piece of this cookie and we insert it into this syringe. We then use the plunger of the syringe to crush the cookie between the plunger and the 3D sieves at the base of the syringe. This homogenizes the cookie into a powder. Next, we draw up some extraction buffer and leave the mixture to soak for one minute. After a minute, we can attach the syringe to my 3D printed lab on a chip device where we can inject the sample and pass it through the device to the test well. Then we can insert the device into the side of the smartphone holder. Next, we can insert our lateral flow strips into the back of the holder to align with the device. Now, we can read the development of these test lines with the naked eye alone. Is the control line there? Then we know that the test is working. Is one of the test lines there? Then we know there's an allergen present. Now, we can simply check for the appearance of these test lines to indicate whether an allergen is present. But as scientists, sometimes we want to know more. Why? We want to make sure that the test is reliable for consumers and does not give false negative results. Maybe you've already heard of these false negatives with the COVID self-tests. This is when only a single line appears on the test, indicating a negative result, when a person is actually positive for COVID. Now, we can use a smartphone to read out extra information and monitor for these false negatives. But why a smartphone? and not some fancy lab equipment. Well, most of us already have access to a smartphone and they're relatively low cost compared with standard laboratory equipment. They're basically a mini computer with inbuilt functions and embedded sensors that we would typically need in the lab to record and analyze data. 
Because they have a flash function and a camera, you can use them to record videos or images of developed or developing lateral flow tests. And then you can send these results via Wi-Fi to relevant care providers, such as the hospital. And there's even a GPS system. So it means we can have specific time and location data where a test was carried out at. Now we can analyze the intensity of the line on the test and thereby measure the concentration of allergen in the food. But we can also use smartphone video recording to check if the test developed as it should. We can monitor how long it takes for signals to appear. Does the test line appear before the control line? This could indicate we're testing a very high concentration of allergen. Or do no lines appear for at least 10 minutes? This could indicate we have a false negative result. And this could be really dangerous if misinterpreted. Now, with lethal allergens, false negatives can have an immense impact as they could lead to an allergic consumer eating a food they believe is free from allergens, but which actually contains high concentrations of them. Fortunately, this smartphone video recording method allows us to monitor and avoid these false negative results in lateral flow. So what is an allergy? And how can you as a consumer check your food with a smartphone? What we learned is an allergy is when you're sensitive towards something that is normally non-threatening. What you're allergic to is the allergen. And in the case of food, this is typically a protein. We can use antibody-based paper tests, such as lateral flow, to detect the presence of these allergenic proteins in foods, so that even though we don't have a cure for allergies, it can be easier to avoid allergens altogether. Thank you for listening.